All right, well, good morning, folks, good morning. and uh, welcome to True Grace Bible Ministry. Again, uh, my name is Mike Marcheski, and we're thankful for you folks being with us. Being that it is still the uh, Thanksgiving uh, weekend holiday, I thought we are going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, I know I talked about, um, you know, expounding more on the, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, about who needed to repent and be baptized, but we're, we're, we're going to push that off for a side for a moment uh, for a few different reasons. Um, number one, it is that Thanksgiving uh, season, if I may, okay? We should be thankful every day, not just at this time of year, but I thought it would be appropriate to go through and look at some of our spiritual blessings and to see what a reminder of things that we need to be thankful for. I know the last um, four or five months, um, we, we've been discussing some, you know, some things that are very difficult and sometimes uh, difficult to understand. So we're going to take a break uh, from some of those things. And being honest with you, I need a break too. Okay? I need a break. So what we're going to do today is just go through and be thankful and as a reminder of things that we need to be thankful for not just at this Thanksgiving season but every day okay so right off the bat Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also that after ye believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. So, a couple things there we, we can be thankful for, okay? Um, number one, we, we see that we have the word of truth, which is the scriptures, isn't it? Yeah. And folks, we need to be thankful that we have the preserved Word of God for us in English, which is the King James Bible. Okay? Uh, Psalm chapter 12, verse 6. Psalm 12. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to go through the Scriptures to take a look as a reminder Maybe a first time understanding of things that we need to be thankful for. But folks, we have the word of truth. And it's the word of truth that was spoken to you, that you believe, the gospel of your salvation. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But the word of truth is the preserved word of God. Psalm 12, verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So folks, we can be thankful that we have the preserved Word of God. The Word of Truth. And from the preserved Word of the Lord, the Word of Truth, we get our Gospel of Salvation. And we can find that. Keep your finger here in Ephesians. We'll be back and forth. But we can find the gospel of our salvation in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. So Paul tells us this is how we're saved today. If you keep in memory which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For how I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So folks, this is the gospel of our salvation. And the Scripture says, once we trust in that, we believe in that, we are then sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. So these are some things we need to be thankful for, aren't they? We have the preserved Word of God, and that's where we go to get 
this message that we need to trust the gospel of our salvation. So we need to be thankful for that. Now, turn to 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 10. It says, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that way that we might know the things that are freely given given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So folks, because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, we can understand the things of God. The things of God the preserved Word of God. We can understand these scriptures. Okay? Because of the Spirit of God who is our teacher. He teaches us all things. Isn't that what the scripture says here? Which things, the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. See, it's the Holy Ghost which is our teacher. Now, unfortunately, verse 14 says, but the natural man, the unsaved man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So folks, if you've never trusted the gospel of your salvation, and you are attempting to read the preserved word of God, and you don't understand it, verse 14 tells you why. And it tells us why the world understands it not. Because they're spiritually discerned, because they've never trusted the gospel of their salvation, and they're not sealed with that Holy Spirit who is their teacher. So, just there we have uh, such wonderful blessings to be thankful for, don't we? Yeah. Just in those couple of things we've talked about there. But we're going to continue on. So, go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, as we look at things to be thankful for at this time. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We have a creator. Remember, we have the preserved word of God, don't we? The word of truth. So, what it says here in verse 1, see this is where most people stumble when it speaks of God being the creator. But folks, we can be thankful that we have a creator, and that creator is God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to go through these things, some quicker than others. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us, that's us, that's the Godhead, make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, or the fowl of the air, or the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay? So, we see that God created man in his own image. And God is an eternal being. So God created man to be eternal. Folks, we are created after that image as well, because we're man as well. But we've inherited Adam's <coughs> image, if I may. We've inherited Adam's sin nature. Okay, But we are created in the image of God. We're created eternal beings. But it's Adam's nature that has been put onto our account. And we're, we're going to look at that in a moment here, okay? But we also can be thankful that God is the giver of life. In verse 7 of chapter 2, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living 
soul. Folks, God is the creator of the heaven and the earth, and He is the giver of life. Now, I had just mentioned about being created in the image of God. Okay, we're eternal beings. But we are also created in that image of Adam. Okay, that, that we inherit it from him. So keep your finger here in Genesis, okay, because we're, we're going to be coming back, uh, excuse me, here to Genesis chapter 2. But for now, flip up to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. As we continue this morning on things we need to be thankful for. Romans chapter 5 verse 6. It says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Remember that due time is this dispensation of grace. It's the but now. For scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure a good man would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, right there, you know, we need to be thankful for the love of God, don't we? That Christ died for us. Verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, folks, we can be thankful that we're justified, we're declared not guilty, and it is by the blood that cleanses us, and that we can be saved from wrath. That's e eternal damnation, folks. We're, we're safe from that, aren't we? Yes. So we have lots to be thankful for. Verse 10, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now, now, we don't have to wait for it, received the atonement. Folks, we've been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, of what he did for us. Okay? The blood has justified us. We're redeemed by the blood. It's that redemptive work of Christ that we need to be thankful for. It's not the things that we do to make ourselves accept it to God. Folks, we can't do anything to please God in that note. There's nothing we can do. I've heard some say there's nothing we can do to please God. In the flesh, you cannot please God. Nobody can. But see, we're no longer in the flesh. Our flesh has been crucified. We're going to get into that, okay? But we now have received the atonement. But what we need to know, and we need to remember, is why do we need that atonement? And why is wrath upon us? And for us that are in Christ, as we go out as ambassadors to beseech folks to be reconciled unto God, we need to know why we're telling them what we're telling them. I hope that makes sense. Why we're telling them they need to be reconciled. See, it's not because of sin, per se, that we commit. But it's because of who a person is in Adam that they need to be reconciled. And that's what Romans chapter 5, verse 12 is saying. You know, why does a person need to be atoned? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. See, because of Adam, sin is put on to all men's account. Every person born into this world is born spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. And that word death in the Bible means separation. Every person is born separated from God. And separation has passed to all men. All is all, isn't it? See, folks, this is why people need the atonement. God commended his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We don't, we're not sinners because we sin. 
we've heard this before from uh, many people, but we're, we're, we're sinners, we don't sin because we're sinners, okay? We're sinners because of the sin that's in us. And that's exactly what Paul says, it's not I that sin, but sin that dwell in me. It's that inheritance we get from Adam. That's why a person needs to be atoned. Remember what was said back there in Genesis chapter 2? In verse 16, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou hast eat of it, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Remember, death is separation. And yes, it's a physical death, as well as the spiritual death that Adam brought into this world. But Adam didn't die physically that day. Adam lived to be 930 years. And the days, and all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. And he died. So on that day, it was a spiritual death. It was separation. And because of Adam, every person born into this world is born spiritually dead. Now that's not something to be thankful for, but because of the reconciliation and the atonement that we now have, that's what we need to be thankful for. That we're justified, we're redeemed, we're glorified, we're sanctified, we're forgiven, and on and on and on. Okay? These spiritual blessings are what we need to be thankful for. Because so many times at Thanksgiving, when we go around the even the dinner table at times, I'm sure, when, when we have uh, people say to be thankful for, it's normally material blessings, okay, that people say they're thankful for. But if you recall what uh, Second Corinthians has to say about these uh, physical blessings, let's look at Second Corinthians real quick. Chapter 4, verse 18. It says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So folks, these spiritual blessings we get are eternal blessings. They're tempor the temporary things that we see here, the material blessings, that's just a temporary thing. So we need to be thankful for these spiritual blessings which are eternal with us. Now, we see because of Adam, a person needs that atonement. And Ephesians chapter 2 backs up what I was saying about being dead, having no relationship with God, being separated uh, from God at birth because of Adam. Ephesians 2 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, the moment a person trusts the gospel of their salvation, they're dead in their sins and trespasses because of Adam. But here we trust the gospel of our salvation. And then we're quickened. We're made alive with Christ. And then we're going to see here in a minute that it's by faith in Christ Jesus that we become children of God. And we are no longer in Adam but we are in Christ. So here we see also in verse 5, even when you were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Both we've been made alive spiritually. And why did he have to make us alive? Because at birth everybody was born spiritually dead. Uh, Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So folks, we've been made alive, okay, we've been quickened together with Christ. Now, verse 13 says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, okay, the uncircumcision of your flesh. And what is Paul talking about there? Well, let's go back in here to verse 11 of Colossians 2. In whom 
also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. See, folks, that inheritance we get from Adam, the flesh, the sin nature, okay, we've received the circumcision of Christ, the, the cutting loose, okay, of the sin nature. The moment you trust the gospel of your salvation, that happens that moment. Look what uh, Romans uh, chapter 6 says. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6. Knowing that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. See, that sin nature is freed from us, and it happened at the cross. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 2. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Folks, this sin nature has been condemned. It's been judged. Okay? And it's been crucified. We've been crucified with Christ. The old man's been crucified. We've been quickened. We've been made alive. And that, that circumcision not made with hands is that sin nature has been, if I may, cut loose from us. It's been, and again, we've been uh, crucified. We've been buried and risen with Christ. And that sin nature has been put to death as well. That's something we need to be thankful for. We're no longer dead in Adam, but we're alive in Christ. Okay, let's keep moving. Titus. Well, we're in Ephesians, or Colossians. We might as well go back to Ephesians a couple pages, a little closer. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So folks, we're, we're saved through faith. And it's a gift. Our salvation is a gift, folks. Okay? It is a gift. Uh, look what Romans... I'm back. I know we're all over the place today, but... Um, this is, to me, it was good stuff. When I went through, it was just a, even a reminder to myself of uh, these wonderful spiritual blessings. Uh, Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin, that sin nature, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, folks, we, we need to be thankful for that gift that we have. You can't work for a gift. If you work for a gift, it's, it's no longer a gift. Correct? All right, uh, Titus. Let's go to Titus chapter 3, verse 4. It says, But after this, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appear, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, folks, it, it's a gift. It's not by our works that we're saved. And that just is something we need to remember and be so thankful for. Okay? All right. Let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Quite possibly, could have been a verse I, I, I maybe should have read at the beginning. But um, as I sat down and, and put some of this together, I put these things together pretty much as, as they came to me, okay, as I thought about them. And there's many, many, many spiritual blessings I'm leaving out, okay. But there's the gist of them that I have here. Just a reminder of our salvation, of this gift of eternal life that we have, and how thankful we need to be. 
So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, remember that hath, is that, that's past tense, he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So folks, we've already received every spiritual blessing we're ever going to get. You can't work for a spiritual blessing. The moment you trust the gospel of your salvation, you receive these spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood folks we've been redeemed we've been bought back okay and we're we're why do we need to be redeemed again it's because of Adam back there in the garden okay and the association with Adam when Adam ate the fruit he passed sin and death unto the world and that's when the world to God became lost. And that's why He needs to redeem us. He needs to buy us back. And it's through His blood. It's through the blood. We can't take the blood out of the excuse me. We can't take the blood out of the preserved Word of God. Like many, many, and many, many, I can keep going, of the uh, new newer versions are taking the blood. Uh, without the blood, folks, there's no redemption. There's no justification. We can't take the blood out of the redemptive work. So we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins. We're forgiven, folks. How many of our sins are forgiven? All of them. The moment we trust the gospel of our salvation, they're all forgiven. Look at what Colossians has to say. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Folks, all our trespasses are forgiven. We're complete in Christ. Um, back to Titus again. Titus 2.14 Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. All is all, isn't it? Yes. That's the redemptive work of Christ, folks. That's what the blood has done. It's redeemed us. It's bought us back. We have forgiveness of sin, and they're all forgiven. We're complete in Christ. We need to be thankful for that redemptive work. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1, therefore, being justified by faith, folks, it's by our faith we be de that we're declared not guilty. It's faith in what Christ did, okay? Nothing what we do, nothing that we do, but we need to be thankful that we're declared not guilty by faith. We have peace with God. Remember what Romans 5 uh, said? While we were yet sinners, while we were without strength, excuse me, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. And while we were yet sinners, we were reconciled. See, folks, we were enemies of God. And that's what Romans 8 uh, also teaches, okay? About being an enemy of God. But folks, we're no longer an enemy of God. We are no longer have hostility with God. But we have peace with God. You ever hear that expression when, uh, you know, people are on their deathbed and they say, oh, have you made peace with God? I don't think they understand. The way you make peace with God is by trusting in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Believe what God says about what His Son did for you. That's how you make peace with God. So we need to be thankful, folks, that we have peace with God. We need to be thankful for verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein ye stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Folks, we have, we have access to God's grace by our faith. <laughs> okay? 
So praise the Lord for that. Uh, Titus, again. Chapter 1. We've seen in Romans 6.23 that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Titus, chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant of God, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So eternal life has always been promised. It was promised to Israel as well. Okay? And it's promised to us. Since, and he promised before the world began. But had in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So you folks, now the eternal life is promised to us in this dispensation of grace, both Jew and Gentile, all men, without distinction. That's what that all men mean, okay? Means. And even here, just getting on that note a little bit, in verse 11 of uh, chapter 2, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, meaning it's appeared to all men without distinction now. It says, In time past it was for Israel. Salvation was of the Jew. And then we come into Paul's ministry when he went to the Jew first and to the Greek, who are Gentiles. Okay? He always went into the synagogues. But there was a change of... Um, of that operation, if I may, okay, where that provoking ministry ceased. And then God's going to all men without distinction. That's what Paul's talking about here when he says, all men. But it's eternal life that we need to be thankful for. And it's not something we have to wait for. We have eternal life. The moment you trust the gospel of your salvation, you now have the atonement. That's put onto your account immediately, folks. You have eternal life. Uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, now, we've talked about being an Adam. Okay? Every person born into this world is born into Adam. So how do we get into Christ? And if we go to Galatians, chapter 3, it, it, it gives us a little bit more insight on that. Galatians 3, 26, excuse me. For you're all the children of God by faith, by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So folks, the moment we trust, here we are, born into Adam, excuse me. And the moment we trust the gospel of our salvation, we're baptized, we're placed into Christ. It's a working of the Holy Spirit. It's that washing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost. We become new creations. We're taken out of Adam and we're placed into Christ. That is something we need to be thankful for, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know the scripture says, all in Adam die, but all in Christ shall be made alive. We're going to be made, uh, even though if we die physically, one day, we're, the resurrection, we're, we're going to be resurrected, have a new glorified body, which we're going to look at here in a second. Mm -hmm. We're going to have bodies fashioned like Christ. Okay? But in Adam, all die. Now, they're going to be resurrected too. But they're mm -hmm. going to be resurrected to be thrown into the lake of fire forever. Who wants that? Who wants that? Second uh, Corinthians, chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, 
and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So, are you thankful for the ministry that you have? We all have a ministry, folks. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you. By us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Folks, that's our great commission right there. To go out and tell folks what God did. That God was in Christ reconciling the world. Not imputing sins unto them. Why? Because he put all the sin of the world on his son. And that's what the next verse says. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Folks, the moment you trust the gospel of your salvation, you get God's righteousness put onto your account. And it's not by any works, is it? But it's through faith and faith alone. It's one of your spiritual blessings. See, but in time past, and this is what Romans says. Look at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verse 19. See, we just seen that we get the righteousness of God put onto our account the moment we trust. And, and that's what the scriptures teach. Now, there are some say that Old Testament believers never had God's righteousness. And it was always by faith. But folks, it wasn't. It was by faith plus their works. Okay, they had to prove that faith by their works. And that's what James gets into as well. But look what verse 21 of Romans says. It says, but now. That means there's a change, right? The righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, of his fulfillment and redemption of the, of the, at the cross, it's unto all and upon all them that believe. So folks, there's been a change of how a person receives God's righteousness. It's by putting your trust in the redemptive work of Christ. But now, see, if God's righteousness was never put onto folks' account, then why did the Holy Spirit tell Paul to put this here? They were righteous. It was a temporary righteousness, without a doubt. Their sins were covered until the redemptive work, their Redeemer came and redeemed Israel. But they had their sins covered. Uh, well, we don't want to get sidetracked here, but I see it. Romans chapter 4, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. See, these Old Testament believers had God's righteousness. It was covered. He didn't impute sin to them, and that's what the animal sacrifices were all about. But they had a work. They had to do works to keep that righteous account. It's not their righteousness, it's God's righteousness. But folks, we have it the moment we trust. So, them are some things we need to be thankful for about our righteousness. And Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Folks, we're already seated in the heavenlies. Positionally, that's where we're at already, aren't we? That's wonderful. Uh, look at uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So folks, our position is in heaven already. We've been seated in the heavenlies. And verse 21, Who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, 
according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So folks, one day we're going to have a body fashioned like the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have glorified bodies. What a day that will be. I can't wait. Now, these are just some of the things that we need to be thankful for every day. Not just at Thanksgiving. Uh, folks, we have an inheritance. We're, we're, we're joint heirs with Christ. Um, oh, and on and on and on, okay? So, what I want to say now, though, is because we know and have all these spiritual blessings, what do we do knowing and understanding who we are in Christ? Does the Scripture say you... Uh, I mean, under the law, if you didn't do such and such thing, then God would do such and such thing. You don't know what I'm talking about. But see, under grace, we're not under the law, but we're under grace. Okay? Remember, grace is not a license to sin, is it? No. Because we, we should have an understanding of our spiritual blessings, of who we are in Christ and what Christ did for us, then the Apostle Paul tells us some different things, okay, than what the law tells us. So look at Romans chapter 6. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 3. It says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, placed into Christ, identified with Christ, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. Paul says we should walk. Not we better walk or else, but we should. Okay, we should walk in newness of life. Um, Ephesians 2.10 Ephesians 2.10 Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We should do good works, folks. But the prior verse says that we're not saved of works, but we should walk in them. Uh, back to Titus again, chapter 2. Folks, there's a lot of good stuff in Titus. Take some time and read through it. A lot of good stuff. Uh, Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. Folks, it says we should do these things, okay? See, because we have that appreciation of that redemptive work and what Christ did for us and knowing that we have all these spiritual blessings, this is how we should live and we should walk. There's nothing conditional there because if you don't live that way, God's not going to zap you. He's not going to give you a broken ankle or, or, or a pulled disc or something like that, okay? God doesn't operate that way. He operates in grace. But because of the grace of God that has appeared to us, we should do these things. This is how we should walk. So, again, just some of the things to remind us of you know this Thanksgiving season. That we need to be thankful for these spiritual blessings that we have. And I'd like to wrap it up here in Titus, continuing on in verse 13. It says, Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, what Paul's talking about here in Titus is in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that preserved word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Folks, that is what we call the rapture. And that's what Titus says, that we should be looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So folks, I hope these uh, scriptures that we opened up this morning were a blessing to you, a reminder of some of our spiritual blessings and what we need to be thankful for each and every day. Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for the redemptive work of Christ. And Lord, we just pray we can continue to be faithful and Lord to do as you say that we should walk in newness of life we should do good works and we should live a godly life so we thank you for your grace in Christ's name